Hey, what's up, guys? I have an HVAC video for all of you. As you can see by the title of the video and to where I'm standing, yes, it is that time of year again. It is time to fire up our gas-powered furnace for the 2023-2024 heating season. Man, the cooling season went by fast, didn't it? But now heating season is underway, and we are about to turn this gas-powered furnace for the first time this year. So, let's go ahead and do an overview and a startup of my 2019 Carrier Performance Series gas-powered furnace. So let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing that we are looking at is the logo. Of course, it's Carrier, and it's a Performance Series furnace. And of course, down here are uh, some warnings and cautions of how to handle this furnace. And over here, we have our filter door. This is where all of the uh, unfiltered air gets sucked into this return vent. And then once it gets blown past the heat exchanger, it goes up this left vent here, and then it blows fresh air, which is obviously the way it's supposed to be. And of course, over time, the filters will, you know, clog up and then the furnace won't work as efficiently. So it is best to check your furnace filters monthly. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take this cover up and see the inside. All right, guys. So as you just saw, I just took off the cover to the furnace. And of course, these are the vent holes to suck air into the heat exchanger for when the draft inducer motor turns on. So I don't know what that yellow light is for, but um, if anybody knows, let me know in the comments because I don't think I've seen much carrier furnaces firing up in, you know, in person. So this might be a bit new to me because this particular furnace here is actually from 2019. The AC unit outside that I filmed multiple times during the cooling season is from 2003. So here is our model number. It's a 58TPOA110V211222 and our serial number. As you can see, it was made on the 43rd week of 2019, which was around October of 2019. And our product there is here. And of course, the serial number once again, here's when it was manufactured, October of 2019. And of course, our heat stage, our input is 110,000 BTU per hour on high mode and 72,500 on low mode. The BTU output is 89,000 BTU per hour on high mode and 59,000 on low mode. And of course, Right here, our inlet gas pressures right here. There's literally a lot of stuff that I do not know. But I know a few things of gas uh, furnace air handlers, so I guess that's fine. So, and of course right here is our service manual right here. It'll also tell you, you know, the continuous, um, if it's on or not. So if it's continuous on, that means the control board, which is inside of this metal bracket here, it has 24 volts AC. Believe it or not, since this furnace is newer, this furnace has an ECM blower fan motor. Older ones have the PSC blower fan motors, which of course you can buy replacement blower fan motors if your PSC blower fan motor is defective. However, ECM motors are... They don't break down as often because they actually, um, they don't have to use a capacitor. They just basically, you know, use two different kinds of wires, two of which is to input 120 volts to the motor and then the 24 volts to send to the motor control board to, to make it turn. So that's the interesting part about ECM motors. So, and again, ECM motors do you know, malfunction over time. They don't last forever, you know. So there's our LED code. If there is, you know, 
Um, there's also numbers too. So basically if a number pops up within this little circle, it'll basically say 11, meaning that, you know, stored status codes are erased automatically after 72 hours or as specified above, meaning no previous code. 12 is blower on after powering up, 115 or 24 volts. 13 is limit circuit lockout. Number 14 is ignition lockout. Number 21 is gas heating lockout. Number 22 is abnormal flame proving signal. And one of which details is a leaky gas valve. Not good at all, because gas is very dangerous. And 23 is pressure switch didn't open. 24, secondary voltage fuse is open. 25, invalid ID, invalid model selection or setup error. 21 is high heat pressure switch or relay did not close. 32 is low heat pressure. 32 uh, 33, limit, limit circuit fault. Number 34, ignition proving failure. Four, 43 is low heat pressure switch. And 45 is control circuitry lockout. So, there you go. And I apologize for talking so much for when I was explaining each and one of the codes for this carrier furnace. But again, there's another warning right here for fire explosions and stuff like that. So I don't think I have anything else in mind for this area of the furnace. So now let's get to the fun stuff. So this is where all the magic occurs. So right here we have our draft inducer fan motor. And it looks a little different from when I filmed the Heil furnace about 10 months ago, I don't know. Seven months? I don't know. But as you can see, this particular draft inducer fan motor has a different um, cooling fan on it. And always check to make sure that the draft inducer motor is, you know, running freely. Like, you know, there's no um, stalling or, you know, rough, st rough starting. Make sure that it just runs smoothly. You can test by doing that by, you know, using your hand to make sure that it runs freely and that it stops you know, smoothly and not roughly. So there's the inducer motor. Here's the specifications of the inducer motor. So I don't know if you can see all that. But this particular inducer motor runs at 3,000 RPM at, hmm, it looks like about, I don't know, probably one and a half amps or something. So Anywho, that's the inducer motor. That's to suck air into the heat exchanger so that the combustion can start correctly. Of course, here are our vacuum switches. There's two of them. The other furnace that I made a video of only has one. I find that to be interesting that there's two. Some furnaces even have three. But there you go. There's the vacuum switches. That's to make sure that the air is being sucked into the heat exchanger at a good pace. So there's that. Right here is our gas valve. And as you can see, it is made by White Rogers. It's a 24 volt AC gas valve. And um, currently it's switched to on. That's what it should be actually. And of course, right here is a a uh, high temperature limit switch. This will trip in if the uh, if the uh, combustion chamber gets too hot. So there's that. And right over here is our burners. There are five of them. So must be a pretty big heat exchanger. The more holes, the faster the your the faster the you know the furnace will heat your house. So. And of course, right here, this wire leads to the hot surface igniter. This particular hot surface igniter is made of silicon uh, nitrate, nitrite, excuse me. Silicon carbide igniters, you can still buy them, but again, silicon carbide igniters don't last as long. So, so there's our igniter. It's a silicon nitride. And of course, it's powering the first burner and then it spreads out and then right over here is the flame sensor that's to detect whether or not a flame is present 
in each and one of the burners. If only one to four burners ignite, but not the fifth and last one, the gas valve will shut off and it'll try again a couple times and then it'll go into a hard lockout for an hour. It's for safety purposes. So anywho, um, I don't think I have anything else in mind. So yeah, I guess it's time for me to flick this furnace on for the first time for the 23-24 heating season. So anywho, I am not going to talk while it starts up because that might be bit, a bit boring. So I'll get I'll just let you guys listen to the sounds of the furnace without me talking. So anyway, enough of me talking now for the third time, like I said. Let's fire up this furnace for the first time. There you go, there it is, firing up for the first time for the heating season. So, again, as you can see, I inspected the heat exchanger prior to this video. So, the heat exchanger looks good. Blue flames, they're all getting sucked into the heat exchanger. Look how long they are, that's ridiculous. Look at that. And the draft inducer motor is doing its job. So, yeah, there you go. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video of me turning on my Carrier Performance Series furnace for the first time this season. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments section below. And if you did like the commentary, then please be sure to like, comment, rate, and subscribe. And thank you all very much for watching.